I remember being a kid and showing up to a big race for the first time. You just hear this rush of the race coming. And then it's just gone. And I just remember thinking, that's what I want to do. We all are out there to prove something, either to someone else or to ourselves. There's certain times where fear starts to mess with your head. Sometimes you put your well-being behind you and you just go. It's a pretty surreal feeling. You have to respect the speed. The track is dangerous, so you have to walk that razor's edge of what can put you in the lead and what can put you in the ditch. I think for some athletes, it's going to be a career definer. Gotcha. My initial thoughts when I heard of the Grand Prix, I said, F me. <laughs> It's gonna hurt no matter who you are. You only have one mission, and that's just to race as fast as you can. The prize purse for the Grand Prix is the biggest off-road purse there is. It's easy to keep training, but can your body handle that to stay at a high level all year? Which is crazy, psychologically, physically. It's definitely a game changer. There is a very different culture between mountain bike gravel and road racing. I think as mountain bikers, we're extremely underestimated. Faster, faster, come on! It's like, oh cute, you race the Tour de France? Well, I'm gonna kick your ass. Anything can happen, and everything will happen in a series like this. valuable about the Lifetime Grand Prix series. Lifetime has come along and really given energy to this type of racing, the gravel racing. The value for us is putting our athletes out there. Hopefully they do well. They will because we do have some of the best athletes in the world. We're super proud of that. That's been a part of our here. This new series is the opportunity of a lifetime and I've been excited about it since it was announced. Based my entire winter training around it. Um, so Having this injury happen right before the first round is absolutely gut-wrenching. Everyone's sponsors are here, there's loads of fans here, all the media is here, there's tons of expectation, the stakes are high. It's the opening round of you know, the biggest series the country has seen in many, many years. It's weird to be in this position, but I think it'll just leave me even more fired up to get out there for the next round. I've done a few of these things before. Am I doing that? Just drop it. All right, Kimo, let's introduce yourself. My name is uh, Kimo Seymour, uh, president of Lifetime Events. I wanted to welcome all the Grand Prix athletes. This is kind of a, a crazy idea our crews around the country came up with last year. And so the Grand Prix, the idea was let's bring together six of the events that we own and produce at Lifetime. We're blessed at Lifetime to have a bunch of really phenomenal events around the country and we thought why not pull together a few of them, create some more excitement around professional riding again in North America. The Grand Prix comes at a great time. The mountain biking was everything in the 90s and then all of a sudden there was all these different disciplines. It wasn't just cross country and downhill. There was 24 hour racing, there was enduro, there was super D, you know, the racing scattered across the U.S. and so there wasn't one strong unifying series. The Lifetime Grand Prix is three mountain bike races, three gravel events, 30 men, 30 women, $250,000 prize purse. We're just excited to kick this thing off and see where it goes. There's this resurgence of both professional and mass participation cycling happening right now in North America. And we thought, let's give some athletes an opportunity to potentially make a living as a professional cyclist again. The Grand Prix is the coolest opportunity that I've ever had as a racer. And I think many of my peers would say the same. It's the biggest, most hyped race series that we've seen in the United States in quite a few years. We designed the series to really test the limits of all of these male and female athletes. 
I think it's awesome. They're going to mix mountain bikers, they're going to mix track cyclists, they're going to mix extra athletes, roadies, and throw us out into the trails and say, go, good luck. <laughs> well, parity was a non-negotiable from the get-go, providing equal opportunity, equal prize purse, equal distances, same start line, same media opportunities. We're loving the fact that you know nobody is super comfortable on every single course that we've, that we've got in the series. There's always been a, a bunch of great events in the States, but to, to pull them together, and I think it is going to change the, the landscape for like off-road racing. It's the next thing in North American cycling. How are we doing over there with that course maintenance we performed this morning? All good? A big, big improvement. Um, all going smoothly. Thank you, Erica. Appreciate that. Thank you. I apologize if I'm walking a little bit fast, but we're just trying to keep moving. Sea Otter has really become this gathering, right? And so it's families and kids and generations of cyclists will host close to 75 or 80,000 spectators. We'll do 8,000 athletes. So you've really connected all the, the spokes of the wheel, if you will, into one gathering in Monterey every April for the last 32 years. I've been to Sea Otter for the last uh, five, six years. This is my second time. This is my first time. Yeah, first time. I've been coming here for the last 15 years. We're all senders. We ain't got nothing to prove. We're just out here having fun. Sea Otter pretty much functions as a trade show. You know, it's really fun to see everybody in person, like a big family reunion. The Sea Otter is one of the largest cycling events in the world, and more and more bikes are becoming about relationships. We are with you. I'll watch you oh, here look who it is! But I, I need to say hi to the real star. The real star? Don't worry, I know. Hi. Everybody sees me. If I'm gonna screw Keegan at all, it's on the uphill. Yeah. Will you just go full gas from the gun, or will you pace it like a two-minute VO2? For me, it's like three people that I will look at. Russell, Keegan, mm -hmm. and Cole. Yeah. And then for like, Just be with them. It, it's like, yeah, I feel like I, I always try to like, tr like literally triangulate myself. If I can be ahead of two of them, then like spring it. I do think that the Lifetime Grand Prix can change the landscape of what off-road racing looks like in the United States. Because there's big prize money and a lot of notoriety with the event, it has brought all of the best racers together. When all of the best racers come together, we elevate each other. The better the people you race, the better you're going to be. If you want to be competitive in this series, you have to be preparing a year in advance. On the mountain bike, on the gravel bike, putting in long hours. It's a dedication. Everyone wants to win. The events last until September, so we're, we're racing now in early April. It's a long season. How are we gonna maintain peak performance throughout that whole year? Everyone's motivated. I mean, it's easy to keep training, but can your body handle that to stay at a high level all year? How will the mountain bikers perform at the gravel races? How will the roadies perform at the mountain bike races? The criteria to select the athletes, a lot of thought went into it. We took some people that had really strong backgrounds and we knew that they would be at the front end of the field. We also took some up and comers that we thought need that opportunity to take that first step. So we kind of have everybody from one end of the spectrum to the other. And some of the fittest, healthiest, fastest athletes can have a really bad day and that might change the landscape for the series. To be honest, I'm surprised you're talking to me at Sea Otter because this is on paper probably like one of my weak link races. I figured we'd probably be talking at Unbound or Crusher and the Tusher. I'm perched over the climb of the corkscrew. 
watching all the poor road racers suffer off it this morning. Full early start for those guys. And it just so happens that this corner, this turn right here, is the first pinch point for the mountain bike race tomorrow. I've been visualizing it, for better or worse, the entire week. And uh, that's the first crux of the race. You can't win the race there, but you can lose it, for sure. The course is pretty fast, honestly. There's all these little single tracks cut through these bluffs, connecting gravel road to gravel road to gravel road. And uh, it's gonna be really important, I think, to have a really good start. And then, you know, you can use the roads later to hopefully make gains or to play catch up. The Sea Otter is a pure classic cross-country mountain bike race. You know, they're gonna take off and head up the climb. It quickly goes into single track and into the very fast descent. It's gonna be really important to get off the front early. Like it goes from a wide car race track down to dirt and then it goes a single track pretty rapidly within probably just over a mile. So. The first half of this course is pretty single track heavy. The second half is much more open and has a lot more road. That last hill coming in, it's a critical junction point. It's a long climb right before they come back in to Sea Otter to complete lap one and it's gonna be even more critical on lap two. Here at Sea Otter, there's a lot of sand, a lot of ruts. It's super full on. Again, this is a two lap race, each lap about 40 kilometers long. It's a fantastic list of riders and again, a combination of road, gravel, cross, mountain bikers. I don't know who's going to be able to win. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes down, especially on the mountain bike, because you have roadies who are really talented, really accomplished, but maybe they've never ridden a mountain bike before. And similarly, you know, I've never even ridden 200 miles like I'm going to do at Unbound. So I, th I think it's an appropriate challenge for, for all of us. I'm thinking a lot about how the gravel background, drop bar background people are going to do in the mountain bike races because they're not very technical. The folks with the mountain bike background aren't going to be able to use that to their advantage as much. But I'm really curious about how the style of racing is going to be dealt with by different racers. Overall, I think the mountain bikers might have a slight edge over the gravel racers because we all have good technical skill and it's hard to train that. A lot of us have raced mountain bikes for 10 odd years, you know, so for us it's even on gravel that skill still comes through when there's a technical descent. But I would bring an advantage because of my endurance, because I train really high mileage. And it's not that mountain bikers don't, but they do generally race a shorter race. Can you also do long? We come from racing World Cups where uh, there's some really intimidating stuff on those tracks. And then, uh, yeah, we're racing here. <laughs> a lot of us are gonna be on the back foot here at Sea Otter, but you get to unbound, you get to crush her in the tusher, Big Sugar where there's more of a pack dynamic and a mental skill set around how to maneuver over long endurance and that's something that road racing teaches you. No one wants to be behind the roadies. You bring a bunch of mountain bikers together and a bunch of gravel riders together, give them six events, three mountain bike, three gravel, certainly you're going to create some competition there. Apprehension for this series is definitely the mountain bike, for sure. I just have very limited experience in it. I need to get on the bike and do my best, accept where I am weak, but also understand that I have strengths that I'm taking from my road background that perhaps a mountain biker doesn't have. The mindset is different when you go into race mode. You're pitting the best athletes against the best athletes, which really is what makes it the ultimate competition. So there's my twos. You have so many different strengths, you know, girls on the road that can just climb like none other, but mountain bikers could pass them on the descent every time. Um, and the fields are deep, you know, and so the competition is stiff. I think the start is the most important part of tomorrow. Did you see the videos that Dennis sent? No. Oh. So you it's... Got some secret intel? Got some Apparently. intel. <laughs> this is what he was talking about. Everyone. Where is it? This is at the start. 
what he was saying is everyone's going to stay on the pavement as long as they can and come in on this right side. It's going to leave the outside open. So if you line up on the left side at this, in the grid, then you can take this line. Yeah, you'll hit the dirt sooner than everyone, but it'll be open. Uh, I'm joined here in the booth, one of the pro mountain bikers that's a part of the Grand Prix. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. You gotta be prepared. So I'm adding a salt box. Payson, glad to be able to have you here. Uh, you have that mountain bike background. You definitely have gravel racing background. This is a series, almost in a way, tailor made for you, notwithstanding r no injuries. Stoked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun to get this thing kicked off. Nice. <laughs> you had a bad crash at Mid South. Talked about your broken hand and broken collarbone. Mm -hmm. How frustrating is this? You're not able to take part of it. Things that are going through the minds of the racers. There's a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement. Yeah, I mean it's massively frustrating. You're at the top of your game right now, so this was a, this was a big opportunity. If they're competing in the Grand Prix, they've probably put Sea Otter as one of the most important races of the year because they know they need to get off to a good start. I'm here at the start of the Lifetime Sea Otter Classic. We are just inside of a couple minutes to go and you can just feel the tension sort of seep over the riders and the crowd here. We know they're coming in motivated. There's certainly gravel riders that are looking at Sea Otter thinking, wow, this is a technical mountain bike course and I have to figure out how to you know, make a mountain bike go on this thing. You got mountain bike riders that are licking their chops thinking this is my opportunity to take some points early in the series. Uh, having to start by skipping the first round isn't ideal, but I'm really grateful that it wasn't worse and uh, I'm really looking forward to being back. I've heard mountain bike races described as like being chased by a pit bull. Like you go as hard as you can at the beginning and you keep going as hard as you can until the pit bull catches you or it gives up. There's no looking around and assessing and planning your attack. It's just full on. Three, two, one, and you are off and running. Catch the luck to all of our open man riders down here. Make sure they get a good spot because right away they're going to go along the course, they're going to turn, they're going to head up, and then there is a critical choke point, a narrow point, where it's going to go onto a very narrow single track. I don't have like the butterfly stuff. Uh, nervous means different to me. It's more of like a, an anticipation and a, there's kind of a pent up energy. Right now on the front, these guys really drilling it. And, and to go this hard in a 50 mile mountain bike race, that's challenging. Slipping your pedal can be the difference of getting into the single track fifth or 25th. And if you're outside the top 20 going into the first single track section, you have your work cut out for you, for sure. Look at this guy going wide. You've already got a rider going off to the left. This is a notorious sand pit, Frankie. One of my mottos is, you know, stories and glories in equal measure, right? And there's always going to be something that happens in the race. Here's the choke point right now where they're going to be getting to the single track. Oh! Two riders off the bike there. I think it was Peter Statna. Sometimes you're gonna win, and that's gonna be great. But if the win's off the table, if bad luck punctures, mechanicals, crashes, whatever's happening out there, there's gonna be a pretty cool story. Not exactly the great starts that you want. A mountain bike race never goes to plan. There are crashes, there are mechanicals, there are flat tires. Someone crashes in front of you at the start, and then you watch the front of the race just ride away. Everyone is out there having some sort of experience. Not waiting around, Keegan Swinson continues to push the pace. Uh, very, very strong rider. He comes from a mountain bike background, so this, he's in his natural habitat. I think that with how important this Grand Prix is and with how much publicity and media and everything around it, it's pretty easy to get caught up in the nerves. The women are ready to go, and here we are at the start. What I've learned in cycling is you do race on your own. But we are underway as the riders fight for position. And Alexa Scarta in that cross country marathon, Stars and Stripes jersey doing a fantastic job. It, it's a stacked field for the women. 
So much of being a successful racer is being able to let yourself off the hook when things don't go your way. Talked about the sandy, dusty turns are gonna prove difficult for many of the riders as they come flying in here. Because things won't go your way a lot. Oh, that is Ruth Winder. Yeah, and Ruth's a fantastic road rider. She went down hard. And if you get hung up on that, it can be hard to be successful in the future. Here comes our women. Uh, Alexis Scarta has been staying on the front. The oh, big crash uh, break. Hannah Otto sliding out there and going down. Bouncing back is, is so key, especially in a series like this. That's Mariah Wilson on the front, bringing the lead group of four women into the start finish. They're finishing lap one of the... The mountain bikers really dominated the front group. Sounds like there's some carnage. Pete went down. I saw Hannah had a big crash. So, yeah, eventful as everyone anticipated. Lap number one completed, so 25 miles to go. When you fall short of your expected race result and you underperform, it's disappointing. We've got the women's field breaking up, the men's field breaking up with some significant time gaps. But it's just wasted energy to sit in the past. It's about looking forward. Vince Derwald, Keegan Swinson, Alex Wild, they look incredibly strong right now. I don't know if anybody's gonna be able to bring them back. Highlight all the things that you did well and make sure you keep doing those things so your next performance is better. And so they know 20 minutes of racing, they have one more big climb, they have a downhill, they're making their way towards the Sea Otter Laguna Seca Raceway to try to be able to ballot out to see who's gonna finish. Expectations are, are really hard. We've got our chase group is now five strong, so we've got Andrew Lesperance, Cole Patton, Lancey. Maybe because I'm a younger rider, I don't have many expectations from other people, which can be an advantage for me. But it's hard. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We, of course, want to win everything. I love competing, I love mountain biking, but I think I love to win more than all those other things. Like if I don't, then I go, what did I do wrong? This is where you can find that if your nutrition, your hydration was just a little bit off, it can make all the difference. There's always a reason. Sometimes it's just because you weren't stronger, sometimes it's because you made a mistake here, or maybe you didn't have the right nutrition, maybe you ran the wrong bike. Like there's so many things that go into winning and everything kind of has to fall into place in order for it to happen. Keegan Swenson attack. He's got a 15 second gap over Russell Finsterwald. So Swenson going away by himself. Our top three have completely blown apart. I aim to try and win every round. Keegan Swenson coming around that final turn. He had broken away. What an incredible ride by Keegan Swenson. To be able to come in solo must have been a really amazing feeling. Yeah, definitely the best way. <laughs> Swenson in first, Russell Finsterwald in second, Alex Wild has come across also going for fourth place now. We're going to see an exciting sprint here, Frank. In this Grand Prix, I don't think it's ever over until it's over. Right now, our lead women coming through right there, and Mariah Wilson pushing the pace. Alexa Scarda, she is a climber and a good climber, so she's going to attack on that final climb. Anything can happen. Oh my gosh, the speed just dropped there on this climb. This is where Keegan Swenson made his move to win. And I think everything will happen. Scarda's starting to struggle. And it even looks like Sofia's starting to struggle. Sofia Gomez the FN, legs have blown up. Incredible. Mariah Wilson just riding away. Man, Mariah, really impressing me. Quick look over the shoulder. She's going to see she's got a gap. Mariah looks. So comfortable. And she was second at Mid South, second at Leadville, ninth at Unbound. So she's been stringing it together. And I think that this is going to be her biggest win to date, her biggest time to shine. It is all Mariah Wilson into the finish, the winner of round one of the Lifetime Grand Prix. I'm here with the winner, Mo Wilson. Mo, tell us a little bit how the race played out. Yeah, my goal is just to stay up near the front as long as I possibly could and then hammer on the last climb. I rode a hardtail, so that worked out pretty well. I really put a really hard effort in at the end. So um, yeah, I'm stoked, I'm really happy. 
Believe it or not, my ultimate goal is the same as before this injury, but I have a lot of confidence in these events being well suited to me. I have a lot of confidence in the intangibles in terms of getting through adversity, consistent results, all that sort of thing. I wouldn't say I'm a mountain biker. I got some work to do first. So yeah, I'll just practice and get better at it. Salvaging that result after a hard crash, um, it'll, I'm still in a good spot for the series. Oh man, that was, that was hard. Uh, not my best day, but uh, I still got second. You know, the women were on fire today. And Obviously like second, first loser in a way. So you line up wanting to win, but um, Keegan, he's a hell of an athlete. So he's, we had fun out there throwing elbows at each other all day. Finishing with a time of two hours, 55 minutes and 23 seconds. Your winner, it's Keegan Swenson. I'm fairly confident in this series. Like I kind of know what it takes to win all the different races. I mean, the unknown is unbound. That's one I haven't done, and I, I don't know all the details. But the goal of the season is to win the Grand Prix. Coming to every race, race to win, and it works out. <laughs> My goal is always to win, and I am going to have a good time regardless. But I'm going to have a way better time if I win. <laughs> Your winner of the first round of the Lifetime Grand Prix, Mo Wilson! They're fierce competitors, and I think not being on the podium is probably a bigger motivator than getting up on the podium. Having to watch their competitors is gonna be a big, big motivator for Unbound, the next event in the series.